So I'm showing uh, some blackberry vines here that have been fed on by bears. And look at all the trampling in there. A little pathway coming up from the old pond there. But notice how all these have been um, disturbed by the bear's activities. Even this plant, which is a coyote brush, has been bent down. So bears climb on top of these brambles. You can see how they've been all pressed down together to get to these delicious blackberries here. I'll look in here, and you can see a whole trail where at least one bear went right through. And that trail is indicated by the leaves turned up with their light sides facing up. So this has all been foraged in here. And you can see also that there are no berries there. In this section, there's a few berries left here where the bear didn't get to yet. And back in there. So, they're not quite finished with it yet, but this is the appearance of, of the foraging activity of black bears on, on the Himalayan blackberry is what this is. So this is a little thicket with a lot of evergreen huckleberry and out there in the more open area there's a bunch of blackberries and all are ripe right now. So I expect there's a lot of bear feeding sign going to be up here and that's why I'm heading up this way. This uh, trail that I'm following is just kind of a rough little trail that seems to have been used a little bit. You can see some knocked over ferns up there ahead. And uh, I'll show you more as we get closer, but I'm hoping to find some bear sign in here. So the ferns have been knocked over on the trail here. There's also um, what looks like a bear scat over here. And some disturbances on the trail. Here's a scat, but that's not a bear scat. It'd be a fox or bobcat. So over here, black bear scat. So... That looks like it's mostly huckleberries, which is exactly what is all around us. We're standing in a evergreen huckleberry thicket right here. So there does appear to be bear feeding sign. There's some trampling in the brush here. You can see some berries still on the on the vegetation there. But there's also trampling around these bushes over here. Zoom the camera out so you can see it. And indication of bear activity in here. Here's some footsteps heading in that direction. See here, well-worn footstep. I imagine that more than one bear has been in here feeding. And so you can see the branches up here are just laden with huckleberries. And the ones down below have been pulled pulled down and fed upon. So there's disturbance here where it looks like the bears have gone into the thicket. Or a bear. Note the disturbance to the ground, the knocked over equisetum plant there. And they're just gonna go all through here feeding on these delicious berries. If you've ever had huckleberries, you know they're really good. Bears love these things, as you saw in that scat back there. They just feast on them. So they'll fill up on these, and then uh, they might find some blackberries. I'm gonna grab a couple to snack on as I go, because they are ripe and delicious right now. So, there's some feeding sign right in here. Let's go find some more. So along with the black bear feeding sign, there's also squirrel feeding sign. They've been, um, opening the Douglas fir cones and eating the seeds from each of the cone scales. And scattered all throughout here are the remains of the squirrel's meal too. So not only the bears, but the squirrels are feeding in here too. So the pathway here branches. There's one that goes this way and one that goes this way. And this one looks interesting because it shows a lot of activity in here. Note the evergreen huckleberry with the leaves turned the wrong side up. And also, note this, which is a Douglas fir sapling, and there's some scratch marks on it, and it has been knocked over so that it's now at about a 45 degree angle. And uh, this is probably 
a tree that's been straddled by the bears because all this sign through here is black bear sign. There's uh, these scratch marks, which are probably just incidental as, as the, the tree was straddled, probably got rubbed by this as the bear was going over it. This got broken off and the entire sapling was pushed down. It should be standing upright like that. So the bear kind of plowed over it as it went through here. And this is all huckleberry in here. And the huckleberries do show signs of having been fed on. And then on the other side of it, it comes out. And looks like on the other side, the bear's got a little open space over there that it can get to. So here's a knocked over fern on the trail. And note the flattening right there. And that is at the base of a large clump of huckleberry. So let me show you that closer. So look for things like this, which is a honeysuckle plant, and normally these grow trailing up other other plants, whoops, like this. They kind of grab onto them and, and trail up. But the darker side of the leaf should be up, not the lighter side of the leaf. So that's been knocked over. And then at the base of it, there's some disturbance in the ground there. And more right here, where you see the flattening. Um, and the flattening is right on this, what looks like another trail. And it seems to come over to that, which is right at the base of a big clump of huckleberry, which shows also some bent over branches. And the, that would be from the feeding sign. Ooh, a poison oak. <laughs> There's a nice healthy poison oak with berries. Don't eat them. <laughs> Anyway, so, flattening right there, some indications of feeding on this huckleberry. There's also, through the brush right here, there's some trampling there. It looks like another trail and it goes between two huckleberry shrubs. So, I'll take you over there. Another knocked over fern right here, wrong side up. And there's that trail I was showing you. So right through the brush here, just a small opening. Bears don't need much. They can even go underneath the huckleberries if they want to. And then the rest of it heads this way. And you can see some disturbed vegetation going there. So it looks like it heads up the hill here. So on this type of terrain, the flattened areas right there are pretty much all you're going to see of a black bear track. The flattening here. So it's not a huge, obvious sign. It's just little flattened areas here and there. And you can follow the sequence of them, but they're not perfect tracks. Deer trails tend to look like this in here. So they follow kind of the contour of the hillside and they're cut into the landscape because the deer use them over and over. So there are deer in here as well as the bears and other animals. So just off the edge of the trail here, underneath uh, Douglas fir tree, there is a scooped out area in the soil. And uh, this looks like a temporary bear bed. Um, sometimes they use these things over and over, and sometimes they don't. In this case, you can see where it just took a few swipes of the paw and knocked some of the soil back from the edges of it to kind of scoop out a little depression in the soil there. And then it was in a shady spot and probably scooping out the soil exposed some of the cooler soil that wasn't heated by the heat of the sun during the day. So that would be a nice cool place to take a nap during a day. It's in a nice dense thicket, um, sheltered on all sides. So the bear had not only shade, but you know, a, a shelter from prying eyes and, and not that anything is going to attack it, but they like to be safe as well, so it has a nice little spot right here and uh, probably felt safe taking a nap there in between feeding on the blackberries which surround this area. So on the other side of these these trees, this is a Douglas fir and a tan oak and a couple more firs. There's a, a whole bunch of huckleberry shrubs there and then behind me there's another huckleberry thicket over there. So it's right in between two thickets, nice little spot for a bear to make a temporary bed 
where it could just take a nap. I'll show you this up close so you can see where a swipe of the paw just moved the soil out, flung it back this way and back that way. Deer will make beds, but generally they don't dig holes like this. They'll just uh, lay down in a nice comfortable spot. But you can see the, the work that went into this one. You can even see what looks like a claw mark right there. Um, the bear put a little bit of work into this and you can see the soil has been flung back from it by the action of a paw. But you know, it didn't take much to scoop this out. And then it's nice and hollow right there. And it's rounded and a bear just curled up and took a nap. So here's a log that the bear just uh, opened it to look for grubs and things inside. It doesn't look like he found much because they didn't spend much time uh, doing anything on, to it. But the larger piece of wood that's been moved there indicates that it was a larger animal. Um, woodpeckers, the larger woodpeckers around here, also damage logs, but they don't move three foot long chunks of, of wood. So that's only the bear in this area that can move things that large. Even though this wood is rotten, there's not much to it. It's very lightweight at this stage. But there's a foraging sign there, so the bear's also looking for grubs or carpenter ants or whatever it can find in there. So here's the path coming up through here. And all you see is kind of an impression of a path where the leaves have been trampled where over here they haven't been. So this is the undisturbed appearance. And then here, where the leaves have been stepped on by probably the deer, the bear, the foxes, you name it. Uh, that's where the trail is. Now right here, this shows a regular bear trail. So right here, and here, there, right there, up here. So there are regular footsteps going up this little um, road cut right here. This is a really old road right here, probably from the logging days, which on this particular property were at least 40 years ago. But note this appearance right here and here and right there and so forth up the hillside. So that's where the bears have been going, or a bear at least. I've been heading up here and leaving this nice worn footsteps and even some flattening right here see that if i move some of that out of there you can see the flattened areas the soil on top of this broken leaf this got knocked down from somewhere looks like right up the hill there that got knocked down but so that indicates that the bear's been going up and down here at least a few times and then once you get up there you can also see some well-worn um, circles in the vegetation, or in the uh, dried leaves, where the bear's been stepping. So again in here, well-worn footsteps into the duff. That's what the duff layer looks like, untouched. And this is what it looks like, where bears have been stepping. Creating these regularly used, worn places through the landscape. right here and then there and there and there and so forth it goes right up through there see how that looks different it's been stepped on this has obviously been stepped on and broken right here and right here you can note the disturbance in the duff layer okay we just came through there and remember I was pointing out the disturbance in the soil here now right up here there's a lot more disturbance right here in this whole area. That probably covers about four feet or so. And the reason for it becomes a little more obvious when you look at the tree. So note right here on the tree, there's an area that it looks like the bear has been rubbing. Um, and also come up here, and you can see the marks where the bear has been biting and clawing this tree. So this is a marking tree, and uh, I'm gonna take you a little closer. But I thought I'd show you from a distance first what that looks like. So this damage to the tree is older. It's healed over. Uh, these horizontal marks right here are the bites. The rest would be scratching and clawing. Um, 
often what they do is they face it with their back and I've shown that in previous videos the bears face these with their back and rub their back on the tree vigorously and then uh, reach back over and claw it from behind the head so here's some claw marks right here this all this broken vegetation that's that's died back this right here is another mark this looks like a bite right here see how it goes this way so they would be biting with the incisor teeth here to bite that and probably knock that down there's another mark here this branch is completely missing could have been a dead branch anyway but I don't know that and then down here was what I noticed from back there is this is smooth and feels kind of oily so this is where the bear has been rubbing so it's mostly rubbing its side or its flanks it looks like and they do that they don't always just rub their back they'll rub their sides on trees and this one shows a lot of that activity it's so smooth and and it just feels smooth and oily not not gross but you know just a little bit smooth there's nothing coming up on my fingers it's probably just been rubbed smooth by the action of the fur of the bear now looking at the ground below it you can also see that this is where the bear stands as it rubs its side against the tree to scent mark so as it leaves it's also creating a stomp trail and this one's beautiful look how deep these are see the deep divots here and here and it just goes through the forest let me move this branch dead branch um right through there there's a beautiful stomp trail with very deep divots in the forest duff made by this bear as it leaves this tree where it has just scent marked pretty cool huh so now let's follow it and i'm going to put my feet in each one of these made by the bear I'm going under a branch here so just a second see how these are just perfectly placed although this stride's a little longer than mine i'm not quite that tall note right here he goes around this little area of raised soil and then here right there at the base of this little tree this huckleberry's been knocked over looks like it gets knocked over when he goes in and out see the top of it how all the bark has been worn off the bark should look like that the lighter bark but right here it's been worn smooth so looks like the action of the bear stepping through here repeatedly has worn the bark off there's a step there I step right here on the other side of the log looks like we're heading for another log right in here okay and then I need to go under because the bear obviously goes under and I can't film and do that at the same time so I'm going to show you right here and then it goes over the log it looks like and these huckleberries have been knocked askew also so I'm gonna go through this okay I came through where the the log was and right through those huckleberries bear went under it I'm not that short <laughs> okay so through here you can still pick up the signs where the bear's been going some of them are more deep than other as we get into the the uh, nice deep duff layer here so the bear goes under the huckleberries oh, look at that <laughs> and right under here so ow that one poked me in the eye <laughs> that's see the thing is bears are short okay so in here got one there one here one there one there one there and you can see it going up through that way now for me to film and crawl through here is gonna be kind of hard I'm gonna try to uh... okay I'm gonna have to stop filming so I can use both hands to crawl through here anyway that's where it's going okay that was interesting so, coming out on the other side 
and here's the pathway, such as it is. So I went through there, but huh, I think if he keeps going through stuff like that, I'm gonna need to come back with some knee pads or something. So, oh wow. Oh, and it goes right into some more gnarly huckleberries. Oh, okay. Goes in there. Okay, so you can see the kind of stuff bears go through. And it doesn't bother them. Now there is a path, it looks like, going that way. But there's also one going this way. And the one on this side looks more well-worn. Like it's had more use to it. I'm going to stick with this one. As much as I can through the huckleberry thicket. Obviously this is not a new trail. And uh, I don't have to be quiet because there's no bear. This is an old trail. This is not something that's fresh that I'm expecting to catch up to him. But, you know, they might be in here. So, goes through here. It's pretty well worn in here, and you can see just the the uh, many trips through here that have caused so much uh, damage. Now this is where the second trail goes, right here. So these are probably trails that they're using for foraging because if you notice the vegetation here, this is all evergreen huckleberry, and that's what they're eating right now. Remember the scat I showed you was all huckleberry, and uh, that's their diet. So their trails, I expect you're just going to go all through this thicket right here. I don't know if I'm going to try to squeeze through that right now. <clears throat> Not without knee pads, <laughs> but I'll show you. They just have multiple trails through here. This one right here. You can see the worn footsteps in there. So underneath these huckleberries, there's kind of a little canopy of vegetation, and it's shady in there, it's nice and cool. So you know, when it gets to be 100 degrees on a hot day, I'd like to spend a day under here. So anyway, I think that's as far as I'm going to go on here. I'm going to go check out what's over here. It looks like there's a path going that way too. Yeah, there is a path in here. So there's kind of a clearing underneath the brush there, but there is a, a sort of rough path under the huckleberries here. Make kind of a little tunnel through the brush it looks like. And again these are probably just used for the bears foraging. It doesn't look like it's getting heavy use, although there is indication of disturbance to the duff layer down there. So I'm going to uh, go through here, but I'm not going to film because that would be too much. I need both hands to go through here. It is kind of cool under here. There's a little tunnel. I made it under the first branches. I had to take my pack off because I can't fit otherwise. <laughs> but you can see the bears go through here. Note the disturbances here on the ground. And then when you come out of the huckleberry thicket, there's a bunch of knocked over ferns. So bears have definitely gone through there. So we're in a little clearing and once again there are multiple ways for bears to come and go through here. There's a little path here that once again dives into the huckleberries. And then uh, the main path seems to go this way. So that's the one I'm going to follow, but there's one going under here. Again, it's probably for foraging purposes. They just make their way through all these huckleberries and find brunch, uh, brush that they can uh, forage on. This is kind of cool. There's a madrone tree sort of growing around a, a tan oak tree. Just thought that was neat. So we're still on the little path here made by bears. And uh, looks like the main part goes there. I'm gonna try for a different route. 
again we're surrounded by evergreen huckleberries which is ripening right now and they are delicious if i was a bear this is where i'd hang out too just munching on huckleberries all day look at all this peeled bark this is a really big madrone tree right here and at the base there's this peeled off bark it's kind of like paper but more brittle and just rolls of bark from the madrone isn't that neat cool huh so the path isn't as obvious in here but there is a bear scout on it Made out of manzanita berries. There's a flattened area right here. Could be a deer bed, maybe a bear bed, I'm not sure. But there's a large, round, flattened area here. Without any other clues, all I can say is probably an animal rested there. The bear went that way. So it looks like I'm on top of a little hill and it slopes down in all directions from here. This is the top near where I found that bear scat in the bear bed or whatever, bear or deer bed. Anyway, it slopes downward here. And it looks like there's a path heading this way. So I'll see where that one goes. So this sort of alleged path I'm following down the hill here is mostly where a bear went down the hill, but you can see it was heading downhill because of all the disturbance that you can pick out even from up here all the way down so when you go uphill or downhill you make a lot more tracks and a lot more sign and that's what happened here and it looks like even a branch got broken there this branch got broken off here too so it looks like it went barreling down the hill so it looks like there's a change of direction here where our path is going that way there's a stump right here. I don't know if you can see that. It looks like it might get more steep down there, so that might be why the direction changed. Looks like the bear went under that shrub right there. That's a big stump. Three inch ruler. Looks like a giant old Douglas fir. So the bear trail seems to have veered to the right. And I think it just got too steep over here. And I know there's a creek way down there. So it's probably the bear's avoiding the really steeper part right here, it looks like. Because his trail went this way. Unless there's some more huckleberries over there, which the bear might be wanting to feed on. Alright, the path goes through here. Ooh, look at these very ripe huckleberries. Don't those look delicious? Bears love these. Humans love them too. Okay, the path came through there. And it's going through here. There's broken branches in here where steps have been. You can see all the disturbed stuff layer there. And the flattening of it goes underneath there. Found where something killed a bird right here. There's a bunch of feathers just scattered around. Okay, now there are three path choices here. So there's one that goes directly to those huckleberries there. One that goes back up the hill this way. And then there's one that goes through this vegetation down here. And I think I'm gonna choose that one. It looks the most well-worn and possibly the one the bear would have chosen. So on this path, there are some stomped on sticks. And it also looks like there's some deer trail here. Deer tracks there. So it looks like this was a good trail choice. The deer and possibly the bear used it. I do see a flattened area right up there. 
even though it's not the greatest trail, it looks like this would be the one that a bear would choose. Whoops. And it goes into the huckleberries. But it looks like I can see some daylight through there. I have to stop filming here. One thing I wanted to point out here is this the scarring on this the branches here from animals stepping over it and hitting it as they go over. And down here, this was freshly broken also. So it looks like the path is going through that. Yeah, you can kind of see, if I lift some of this up, that there is a little rough path through here. Now the rest of it is pretty dense thicket in here. Mostly good for feeding. But, looks like if you're a deer or a bear, you can go under this stuff. And again, you can see broken branches that indicate passage through here of the wildlife. So I know this goes out somewhere because they've been going through here. See all the broken stuff? They've definitely passed through here. It's not the greatest trail in the world, but it'll do. Okay, I made it through. Onward, it looks like it's a little open, a little more open and clear. I did find this really cool acorn in, the, in there that was opened by a mouse. So see how clean this edge is? And you can see tiny tooth marks in there. Right on the edge. See the little tooth marks? That's called chatter. And it's where they anchor their teeth. So they'll anchor the teeth and then they'll use the other teeth to kind of scoop out the inside. And uh, once they get it open then they can eat the acorn. So the trail seems to be heading this way, but there's also some foraging sign over here where our bear, it looks like, got into more of the huckleberries. Note the honeysuckle plant turned upside down on this fern that's been knocked over. And how all the berries, there's some green ones in there, but they've taken the ones that are ripe. The path goes this way, and it's getting to be a little bit easier to see that it's actually a pathway here, um, rather than just kind of bushwhacking, which back there it looked like just bushwhacking. Still a lot of huckleberry in here. That's where the most well-worn path goes, is right up there. And it looks like there's also some sign going this way. So, I think I want to head downhill. So it's getting to be late in the afternoon and the sun is going down and I kind of want to head down now. So I'm going to take the downhill path here and follow just the signs left by traveling animals knocked over branches Things that are broken off like that. This one got knocked over. There's a fern knocked over with the wrong side up. So there's definitely been animal passage through here. And that's what I'm looking for. A stepped on fern. And a more open area up ahead. So I came out into that open area and was rewarded with this beautiful trail right here. No mistaking that. It's too wide to have been made by deer. And uh, even though they may use it, the grass getting trampled down in such a wide manner is bare sign. And this fern stepped on and damaged. Huh. Two trails. I think we may be back to where we started. So here's a trail through this brush. There's also one that goes through this way. I'm going to check out this one because this has more interesting stuff 
to show you this uh, knocked over vegetation here. Flattened areas underneath are being stepped on. Now note the reason that I know this is all bear sign is because this is not an area where humans are going. Except for me. That's been stepped on and broken. This got knocked over. So all the way through here, I'm following vegetation sign. Oh look, there's some deer scouts. See? So deer do, do, do use these trails as well. It's not just the bears, but... Deer don't make as much sign as bears do. Bears make the largest amount of sign out here. So, when a bear opens up a trail, everybody else gets to use it. And there we are. And this is back where we started. The loop, sort of. Back where the bears had been foraging on Huckleberry. So I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, trailing adventure, following bears across the landscape and seeing how they move through the woods and, and what sorts of things indicate their passage, what sorts of clues tell the tracker that the bears have been around. And hopefully that was educational and fun and, and you enjoyed getting some insight by moving through the landscape in the way that bears do. There's really no other way to study them and understand the way that they do these things if you don't follow their trails. Because it certainly gives you insight that just reading a book about bears won't give you. I mean, if you're following their pathways, you see the sort of obstacles that they have out here and how they overcome them, where they make their trails, and uh, what sorts of food sources they have and where they hang out, where they sleep. So it's helpful and a really educational way to learn about these animals, to follow their trails. And uh, especially large animals like bear and deer, because they leave so much sign out here. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that and had as much fun as I did. Obviously you didn't get as dirty as I did, but I think it's time for me to go hit the shower. Hope you've enjoyed.